The Mathematics of Time, a process that forms the geometry of space-time and the future uncertainty of life. This video explains a new theory called quantum atom theory, an artist's theory on the physics of time as a physical process. Because this theory is based on a physical process, it can be totally explained by physics and mathematics, unlike previous theories that have only been able to explain time using philosophy and metaphysics. The mathematics of this theory will be quite easy to follow because the mathematics of this theory is based on the geometry of a three-dimensional physical process. This is important a theory that only has a mathematical understanding like quantum mechanics can never be a complete theory. Also, a theory that was based solely on observation but has no mathematical base would be lacking in a very important way. I will start with this diagram representing the flow of time. In the top left corner, we have the equation known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle with 4 pi representing a sphere. We have 4 pi in this equation because the uncertainty principle is formed by the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics that expands out as an inverse sphere. This process is formed by a light wave radiating out from its radius at a constant speed forming a sphere of uncertainty of where and next light particle of photon oscillation will be formed. It would be logical if time was formed by this process that represents the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, that time would expand out in every direction in three-dimensional space with the expansion of the universe. But this is not what we observe. Time is two-dimensional with a past and a future and a timeline forming an arrow of time that modern physics cannot explain. Almost everywhere else in this diagram we see 2 pi. The reason for this is that equations with 2 pi have cylindrical symmetry, a form of line symmetry. This line symmetry is formed because when light comes in contact with matter it forms a photon-electron coupling and we have matter-antimatter annihilation in just one direction forming the arrow of time in that reference frame. In the lower right-hand corner of the diagram, we have Planck constant, h over 2 pi, representing a constant of action in a dynamic process that forms the arrow of time. Also, we see Heisenberg's uncertainty principle reformulated with energy and time with 2 pi, representing the timeline, instead of the 4 pi, representing three-dimensional space. Note also that the oscillating wave represents harmonic motion and that the equation representing the movement of the pendulum is typical of equation representing the movement of objects, with 2 pi representing a universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that we can see and feel is the flow of time. This diagram shows the complex plane with the positive and negative numbers and the imaginary number going off at right angles with zero in the center. This still represents the three-dimensional geometry of a physical process. The zero represents zero time, or t equals zero, the moment of now formed by light interacting with matter with the positive numbers marching off forming a potential future with a square probability and the negative numbers receding towards a limitless past representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. In the top left hand corner we have the equation of Maxwell's second law with north and south magnetic poles cancel out equaling zero within a sphere 4 pi of uncertainty. This forms the continuous flow of electric charge with the movement of electromagnetic fields. The electric fields will always be at right angles to the magnetic fields because the momentum of the light will always be at right angles to the surface of the sphere. This is represented on the diagram by the imaginary numbers being at right angles to the real numbers. In Maxwell's theory of magnetic fields, any moving charged particle creates a magnetic moment because positive and negative charge is an innate part of matter that keeps canceling out this process is universal and continuous, forming the continuum of time moment by moment. 
On the lower left hand side of the diagram we have Dirac's equation that always equals zero representing time or t equals zero with matter antimatter annihilation forming the magnetic moment or dipole moment with the future coming into existence with each new light photon oscillation or vibration. This magnetic moment is formed when light waves interact with matter to form a photon electron coupling. An electron is the most spherical object in the universe. This spherical symmetry or organization forms the low entropy that creates the possibility for the continuous increase in entropy or disorganization that we have in the second law of thermodynamics as time unfolds. As photon energy cascades down, it forms greater degrees of freedom for the increase in entropy or disorganization forming the uncertainty of everyday life. In the top right-hand corner of the diagram, we have Euler identity, the most beautiful equation ever to be discovered by man. But this beautiful equation has no meaning or purpose in modern physics. But in this theory, Euler identity is interwoven into the dynamic fabric of our universe. With the plus one representing one quanta or photon equals zero time, t equals zero, the moment of now. To understand this further, we have to use the next diagram that shows how the spherical symmetry breaks forming spiral symmetry that has a line symmetry for the arrow of time. When the spherical symmetry is broken, it forms spiral symmetry in the form of the Riemann surface rises up out of complex plane forming a spiral pattern. Euler identity is at the heart of this process. The easiest way of looking at this is that the only number you could add to the number 1 to get 0 is minus 1, and this forms the rotation that breaks the spherical symmetry. Also in mathematics, the imaginary number i is the square root of negative 1. There is no objective of understanding to this. You could say that this is just the way of mathematics is. But in this theory, the imaginary number i is the square root of negative 1 because it is part of a physical process linked to the square of probability. There will always be uncertainty at the quantum level and in our everyday life because the imaginary number i is the square root of negative 1, representing this rotational symmetry that maintains the probability function of t equals 0, the moment of now. It may seem at times that the theory is explaining the paradoxes of mathematics rather than the mathematics explaining the theory. This is because human mathematics is based on the dynamic geometry of the universe that this theory is explaining. This can be seen by the way Euler identity and imaginary numbers are part of the theory. This theory can also give an explanation of why pi is an irrational number that never ends and continues forever. If we take Einstein's equation, energy equals mass time, the speed of light squared, we can see that the energy is linked to light. Light will continually radiate out in every direction at a constant speed, forming a sphere. Therefore, we have pi in human mathematics as an irrational number. Because this process is continuous, we can only have the approximation of pi. This theory gives us a reason for irrational numbers. This is because human mathematics is based on the dynamic geometry of the process explained in this theory. Therefore, this theory can explain the paradoxes of mathematical infinity. These infinities are formed because we have a process of continuous creation that we see and feel as time that has the geometry of space-time. A mathematician will interact with this universal process continually forming his or her own space-time geometry. Therefore, it is only logical that he or she will be able to divide that geometry into an infinite number of smaller parts as time unfolds. The universe is an interactive, dynamic, expanding continuum, and therefore we have the infinities of human mathematics. We are all active participants in the dynamics of our universe. Each rotation of the origin 2 pi 
cylindrical symmetry has to be added, and we find ourselves on another sheet of the complex plane. This spiral symmetry form line symmetry representing the timeline or arrow of time for an individual reference frame. The entire spiral pattern is equivalent to a sphere 4 pi with a single minimum dynamic origin formed by spherical symmetry. When the spherical symmetry is broken, it forms the imperfect spiral symmetry of life that is visible in nature. This is because if the quantum wave particle function or probability function is reformatted as a linear vector, then all the information I have found says that for each vector is formed by adding the two previous vectors together, this forms the Fibonacci sequence 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, ad infinity. In this theory, we have the Fibonacci numbers in nature, not because of the economy of growth or space, but because time and space is being formed by the geometry and therefore the mathematics of this dynamic process. Because this is a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking, and the sphere is the most compact structure in this three-dimensional space, the Fibonacci numbers will also be seen as the most compact economical growth pattern over a period of time. As can be seen on the diagrams, we already have zero representing the moment of now time equals zero with positive one and negative one representing the positive and negative electromagnetic waves. Therefore, we have the start of the Fibonacci sequence, 0, 1, 1, in the diagram. This is linked to the Euler identity, giving this beautiful equation a place in the structure of space and time. To explain how the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics can represent the potential possibilities and opportunities of everyday life, we have to use the mathematics of the electromagnetic force that is based on the work of Michael Faraday. Because a light photon of quantum mechanics is also the carrier of electromagnetic force, this can be seen as one universal physical process. In this diagram, instead of having zero in the center of the diagram representing time equals zero, we have Q representing charge. Instead of having a number line representing the future, we have a test charge represented by a little q. The future is represented by potential energy in the form of voltage acting on a charge to move the charge from one point to another point. The voltage is the work done to bring the test charge little q from infinity all the way into a point that is distance r away from the main charge q. This gives us a totally objective understanding to electromagnetism. We have to do work by putting energy into something to create the potential of our own future. Because this is a universal process, it must be the same for all electrical activity. Therefore, electrical activity in the brain can be seen as the most advanced part of this universal process. Therefore, conscious thought is always in the moment of now. With a continuous stream of thoughts and ideas that can comprehend this process as time as an interactive process of continuous creation with a potential future infinity of possibilities. By dummying down consciousness to the level of electrical activity that is aware of its own electrical potential, we can place the individual observer in the center of his or her own reference frame as an active participant in the dynamics of our universe. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time as part of one universal process. This is true for the smallest creature as it is for the largest planet. Therefore, Newton's universal law of gravity is part of this process. In this theory, Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or greatest time dilation. This can be seen in mathematics with both the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus, the strength of gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. 
There is no mysterious action at a distance in this theory, and the gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of the universal process within the electromagnetic force. We have one universal process that begins with a quantum wave particle function, or probability function of quantum mechanics, expanding out as an inverse sphere and ends with the inverse square of gravity and Newton's third law of motion. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity is the opposite reaction to the atoms radiating quantized spherical wave fronts of the electromagnetic radiation. So far in this video, this theory has been explained using the mathematics that we already have. Now we are going to look at one new equation that this theory is based on. In this equation, the Lorentz contraction of space and time is between the energy and mass. The greater the energy, the greater the time dilation and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this, and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space formed by the rate that the time flows. The C2 is light radiating out in all directions, forming a sphere of probability. It is a probability wave of a potential future event, and during the act of measurement of the magnitude squared, or C2, gives a probability for different potential future outcomes. The brackets represent the dynamic boundary condition of the reference frame. This is formed by the surface area of the sphere 4 pi that forms a two-dimensional 2 pi boundary condition. The infinity of symbol represents the whole universe as an infinite number of dynamic reference frames that are continuously interacting, forming the uncertainty of everyday life. In this theory, time is nonlinear because we have an arrow of time for each reference frame. We have our own timeline from birth to death, but this is within a cosmological timeline for the whole universe that is linear. This process is universal for every individual part of the universe, as if for the universe as a whole. The whole universe is an expanding universe sphere of probability, forming an infinity of possibilities. This infinity can be explained mathematically as the square root of the continuous irrational number pi. Because this is an irrational number, we can only ever have a mathematical approximation of our infinite universe. The universe is expanding in space and time, forming what Einstein called space-time. This expansion can be seen not just as galaxies expanding away from each other, but also as future possibilities and opportunities relative to each individual. Therefore, each individual observer will always be in the center of their own reference frame within the center of their own potential infinity. This is because we will all create our own future relative to our position and the energy and momentum of our own actions. An observer can never get to the edge of the universe because he is creating his own space-time relative to his energy. It makes no difference what galaxy you observe from because time and space are interlinked. The greater the time dilation, the greater the length contraction of space. In this way, an infinite universe fits within a finite sphere as long as the sphere is expanding continually in space and time as an infinity of possibilities. Therefore, within such a theory, because the laws of physics are based on one universal process, the universe always seems to be fine-tuned or in perfect balance. It can never expand into nothingness or undergo a big crunch collapsing in on itself because gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and rate it. it will help in the promotion of this theory.